Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to do this floating cube effect. I've got my clip here where I hit the table. That's the point where the cubes start to floating. So I set here a marker and then I'm coming in from the right side and I pretend like I'm tapping on the cube. So the cube will fly to another cube I will animate here. And that's exactly at this position. So I will set a marker here again. Then take this clip and create a new fusion clip and open it in the fusion page. Then in the fusion page, create two cubes. I won't go too much into details how to create these cubes. I've made a separate video for this. I will link it down in the description and you can check it out. And there you can learn step by step how to create these cubes and how to animate it. Here I will just do it real quick. So what you need is a rectangle, a background, a shape 3D, a merge 3D and a render 3D. The rectangle and the background is just to have the outlines of the cube and the shape is of course the cube, the merge to merge everything together and the render is because we are here in the 3D space and we want to render this out back in our 2D space. So first I select the rectangle and disable solid because I just want to have the line of the cube. So I set this to around 0.01. Then I choose the background and choose a color I want it to have. Then the shape 3D, go here to controls, then select the cube because we want to have the cube. And I will set the merge 3D onto the left window. So we have here the 3D space. Then you see now it looks like the cube is exploded. Go back here to the rectangle and set the width and the height all the way up to one. So you have a full cube. And one thing I also want to add is a soft glow. So after the background, I hit shift and spacebar, type in soft glow. You need to add it after the background and before the shape 3D, it won't work in the 3D space. And here we are in the 2D space. Then adjust the glow you want to have it like this. And then after the shape 3D, we will add a transform 3D. And everything we animate, we do it with this transform 3D. So we go right here, here we have translation. So we can position it to the left, right, up and down, back and forth. And down here, everything is about the rotation to place it exactly into our shot. So it looks very natural. So take your time and place the cube as you want it to have. I would say this looks perfect in the shot. So I take everything from this cube and copy it with command control C and over here and plug it in. So I have my second cube, go back here to the transform. Then the second cube, I set it like this. I'm very happy with my cubes. Then let's go to the floating animations. Open up your splines up here with this spline tab. Make it a bit bigger so you can see it better. Then on the timeline, go further until you're here on your first marker where you hit the table here. Then select the transform node from this cube, set everywhere a keyframe on the translation and even on the rotation here and do the same thing with the other transform node like this. And now from this marker, we want the cubes to float up until I hit it here. So we go further through our timeline to the next marker here, then take the transform node from this cube and just position the cube where you need it to have. So it looks realistic when you tap the cube. And to make it more realistic, go down here to the rotation and give the cube a little bit more of a rotation. You will see that will look very realistic. So it doesn't flow just straight up. So we have a little bit of a rotation inside it. And the more angles you play with, the, the more engaging it will look like this. And then take the other cube and do the same thing with this cube. Just let it float up somewhere around here. And here when I tap the cube, it accelerates very fast. So I go just like four frames further and then I place this cube over here. So that's the moment where this cube hits this one. So I take this transform node and position the cube like it hits the other one. You will see every time you add a bit of a rotation, it will look very natural like 
here. This is the place where the cubes hit each other. So we set also here a keyframe on the second cube because now we can go until the end of our clip. Then we put our left cube all the way to the left side. This one will fly far, far away. It doesn't matter how this cube will fly because you won't even notice it. And this cube hits the other one, so it needs to float a little bit back here. Maybe a bit down. And give them like a back rotation like this. So maybe half of a back rotation because of the, the impact like this. So this is just the rough keyframing of the cubes floating up like this. Then I will hit it here. It flies over like this and it ends here. This looks very, very rough. So go here to this little icon, zoom to fit, and you have all your keyframes. And don't worry, it looks very chaotic. Just press Ctrl or Command A to select every single one of them. Then press F on your keyboard, not S, very important, press F and then T. So this one will open up and then ease in, push it all the way up to 100 and ease out all the way down to zero. What this does is every curve you have here is at the beginning very fast and then slows down. So it looks very natural at the end. So when we play this back, they start very fast and slow down up here. Then I tap it fast, slow down and here once again. So this is the magic behind this floating. It needs to accelerate very fast and then go very slow. One little mistake I noticed here, we need to have the same speed the whole time. So we just need this transform node down here. This is the transform 3D one. So we deselect the other one. So we have only these keyframes visible here. And then we take all this and select the straight line down here. So we have all the lines straight and not in a curve. So we have this one accelerating very fast like this. And for the little spice at the end, we add a camera shake while I'm hitting the table. So select your merge node, hit shift and spacebar, type in camera shake. Then it will be way too strong at the beginning. So set your overall strength to around 0.5. Set the speed all the way up to one and set the edges to duplicate. So you don't have this border around here. Then go over to settings and turn the motion blur all the way up. Then make sure your timeline is here on your first marker where you hit it. Then with the camera shake selected here on controls, the overall strength, set a keyframe. Then go 10 frames further and set it down to zero. This will create this curve down here. Once again, zoom to fit. Command or Ctrl A to select everything and press S. And here ease in all the way up and turn this curve down. So it starts very fast and then it slows down. And you will notice we have to shake all the way here at the beginning. We don't want that. So go to the frame where your marker is go one frame back and turn the overall strength all the way down. So here at the beginning, there's no shake. Here it begins and then it slows down. And this is how easy you can let objects like these cubes float. Have fun creating and see you in the next one.